Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Naruto chapter 614 review. Now, this week's chapter Naruto, automatic, the rating is going to be great. This was a great chapter of Naruto because we have a few things that are revealed and a pretty a pretty monumental character death, at least in my opinion. Why is that? Because Nenji was was my favorite character in Naruto. But as the series progressed, he kind of got away from that and he became more in my top five. He wasn't number one, but he was still my top five favorite characters of the overall series of Naruto. So clearly this was an important scene, not only for the actual series itself, but for me in particular. But I do want to say that the saddest part about this chapter isn't what you think it is, all right? Let me just let me just put it like that, all right? The saddest part about this chapter is not what you think it was. So I'll get into the actual thing as I progress with this chapter review. So basically, the first thing the first thing I, 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 I want to talk about here is the Hyuga clan. The Hyuga clan, meaning Nenji, Hinata's father, and Hinata herself, they went in and they did their thing today. They they did their thing today. When I saw Nenji's father repeating those old Hyuga words, remember, the Hyuga are the strongest in Kodaha. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yo, like, I, I like the Hyuga clan. The Hyuga clan, to me, are a pretty damn cool clan. They, I love the Hyuga clan. Out of all the I motherfuckers that exist in Naruto, in my opinion, Hyuga numero uno. Why? Because they're fucking cool as shit. They are cool as all hell. Love them. I love the Hyuga clan, period. Now, the Hyuga clan, Nenji's father did his thing, all right? When he actually blocked that giant uh, ten tails uh, tail, the, the, that big hand tail that was coming for a swipe and shit, and he blocked that with an with a air palm barrier, that was cool. That was really cool. I like that shit, all right? Hyuga, I, mean, uh, Hyuga, I like the Hyuga clan. I really do. And... You know, like they they did their thing with the with the chitin and you know continuing the chitin, so that was pretty cool too. So that's number one. Number two is that we have a talk. We have a talk between Obito and Madara. Okay, and this oh the reason why I like this talk so much is that it confirms it confirms a fucking plot hole, a fucking plot hole that I've been saying. For the fucking longest. Not only that, but it confirms that apparently, apparently, the Juby has another transformation. It's going to transform once more. It's gonna go from a fucking Bulbasaur to a fucking Ivy Zor. It's gonna start morphing and shit. It's morphing time. It's gonna morph. And that's number two. Number three is that. Madara and Obito right now are losing control of the Juby as it continues to transform. And apparently, according to Madara, in order to completely control the Juby, you must become the you must become the Jinchuriki of the Juby. And the only way that can actually happen is if is if Obito and Obito says the only way that can happen is if I perform the Rene Tensei and sacrifice my life so you can actually quote unquote live in real world perspective and then you become the Jinchuriki because only a living person can become a Jinchuriki, not an El Tensei. The reason for, first of all, I will say that Obito, he did gain a pair of balls. Okay, fine, good, all right? Even though that does not change his standing as a villain, he is still a shitty villain. He is still the worst villain in Naruto, period. That does not change shit. The thing here is that he did gain, he did grow, no, no, he grew one. He grew a single strand of pubic hair. Good for him. Good for him. Now, he said, and I quote, and I quote, in order for you to live, I need to sacrifice my life by performing the Rene Tensei. This confirms the plot. Why? Obito himself is confirming that he can perform Rinnegan maneuvers. What does that mean? What does that mean, kids? That means that this motherfucker 
should not gotten hit in the face with a raw sink. Who are you? No. Fuck. This guy should be doing all my pushes. He's doing fucking crazy animal summonings. What the fuck ever. Okay. He should have been done that shit long ago. He himself confirmed that just because you have one Rinnegan eye doesn't mean you can't do Rinnegan shit. That's simple. This confirms plot hole. I wipe my hands clean from that shit. Why? Because the King of Lightning, no shit, is right. Enough said. Enough said. Enough said. Enough said. All right. All right, now. After that, we see the Ten Tails perform other shit. Yes, now granted, this was pretty fucking lame. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, right? So to me, it was like really like wood, wooden element piercing wood. And it's like a rain of fucking wood chips. Uh, like literally, like a rain of wood chips from each of the tails of the, of the, uh, Juby, like, you know, mm, like that, 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 that's all I was doing. Just, you know, mm. and it goes to show you, it goes to show you how fucking pathetic some of these ninja are. It's like, really? Like, oh, they're too fast. Like, what the fuck? It's a rain of wood chips. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I was like, what? Like, come on, man. Like, it's, it's a rain of wood chips. Like, mm. I'm like, dude, really? And then I I find it really ironic that the first thing, the first thing, aside from, from a Bijudama, the first thing this, you know, Ten Tails God does is some wood shit. I'm just saying. All right, I'm just saying. But after that whole entire thing with the wood and the sprays of wood, and we have the Ten Tails do like a tail swipe at Naruto and his group, and we have Neji's father do the air palm bear to actually block the tails, and then we see the actual finger target Naruto and Hinata, and we have Neji come in there and take the brunt of that attack. All right, now see, this is where shit gets really fucking heavy because we see Neji, Naruto's like, "Where's the medic?" You know, because 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 at this point in time, what happens here is that the Earth guy from the Earth Village finally does his fucking Earth Mountain shit, so he makes so he makes his Earth Mountain. And then he actually, uh, he, he, he actually squishes the ten tails in these two giant slabs of earth, right? Now, the thing here, the thing here that was really sad, right? So we have Nenji, he's on his deathbed, literally. Well, mm, yeah, 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 I'm going, I'm going to assume that he's dead, I really am. What happens is that we have Naruto, Hinata, and they're there. And... And by the way, I will say this does this does strongly, strongly like strengthen the bond between Hinata and Naruto. So for all you Naru Hina fans, fuck it, whatever, I don't care, because Hinata's right there. Hinata and Naruto are literally crying over Ninji's body, and Sakura's where in the fucking back. All right, on some Jim Crow, she's in the back of the bus. So. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, but whatever, Nenji, he's, you know, he's dying, he knows he's dying, so he says, no medic, I know I'm dying, and then talks to Hinata, says a few words about how he's grateful that he can protect Hinata from danger, solidifying his standing as a branch member of the Hugo clan, how he realizes that he know he tells Naruto that Naruto, you're... You know, like, your life is not your own. Well, something along the lines of, like, you know, we're here to help you, and thus, you know, the burden of our lives is also on your shoulders. Something along that line. Where it's, you know, something along that line. Not really, like, a big monumental moment statement. But basically, he's telling Naruto, in a nutshell, that not only do you have your life to worry about, but the lives of others. Very simple. Very simple, all right? And then he talks about, and then Naruto, he, he's laying there, he's sitting there, and he's like, why would you sacrifice your life to protect me? And then we have Nenji having his flashback about how he had that first fight with Naruto, where Nenji was all about destiny, and, and how you cannot change destiny, and how you cannot overcome destiny. And then Naruto's there, and Nenji says, you're a loser, and you're going to be a loser, and continue being a loser for the rest of your life. And then 
Naruto says that one word, that one key line, like, I'm trying so hard because you called me a loser. And then Nenji, his last words to Naruto were, because I was called a genius. And then Nenji, his seal on his, uh, his seal on his forehead disappears. And then he says that one thing in his mind, Father, now I understand what the freedom of choosing your own death really means. And he falls down limp, assumed dead. And that right there is when the chapter ends. Now, the saddest part about this chapter is not the death of Nenji. No. The saddest part about this chapter is Nenji dying without knowing this entire time that he was right. That's the saddest part. That right there, people, is the saddest part about this entire chapter. Nenji, he was talking about how you cannot fight destiny. You are chosen by destiny for specific roles. And Naruto was the example which he followed to overcome destiny. Naruto, by prophecy, by prophecy, is a chosen wonder. Naruto, being where he is today, was choice of destiny. Destiny. Not only by prophecy, but by bloodline. By bloodline. And Nenji, this entire time, never gain never gain this knowledge the knowledge that naruto was his chosen child nenji th this entire time truly believed that naruto was in fact this good the hero of the uh, the hero of konoha a sage master master the qb and you know this powerful outstanding ninja by hard work and effort alone he never, ever, ever came to the knowledge that Naruto was a chosen child of wonder. He never knew that what he said back in the day, he never knew that he was right. And that's the saddest part about this chapter. Nenji is going to die. Nenji is dead. Knowing, no, correction, not knowing the truth about Naruto Uzumaki. That Naruto Uzumaki is in fact a chosen child, chosen by destiny, to lead the world to prosperity or chaos. And that is the saddest part about this chapter. Right there, right there, right there. So I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Uh, the ratings gonna be great, it was, it was a great chapter Naruto sad touching uh things revealed here about you know the ten tails transformations and hopefully this forces naruto to consider his standing about being you know about leading the world into everlasting peace and prosperity all right hopefully this change hopefully this death on his shoulders leads naruto to become a little more realistic in his thinking i doubt it but you know because right here is the first time someone has ever died on Naruto's shoulders. Actually died from Naruto. So now he has that weight. He has that weight on his shoulders. That, that, that very significant death. So, but we'll see. We'll see. So I'm done. King Lightning, be sure to, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe as always. And I'm signing out. Peace. Have a nice day.